Father, we just thank you for allowing us to come into your presence today. We thank you for waking us up to see another day. In the scripture, you told us that this is the day that you have made and that we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we are glad and we are rejoicing right now for what you have done. Lord, we are rejoicing right now for what you are doing. And for this reason, Lord, we say thank you. We thank you from the top of our lungs. Lord, we thank you from the, 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 the roof of our lips. And we just say thank you. We thank you for giving us this day. We thank you for carrying us through. We thank you for not giving up on us. And Lord, we just say thank you. And Father, if I had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough. But we just say thank you. From those that are listening, from those that are watching, from those that are just now tuning in, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Lord, we woke up this morning with you on our mind, and we just want to say thank you. Lord, we just want to repent if we did not wake up with you on our mind, but in the midst of it all, you've still been good to us. Lord, you've been better for us than we've been to ourselves, and for that reason, Lord, we say thank you. And on this day, Lord, we just give you all the praise. On this day, we give you all the glory, and on this day, we give you all of the honor in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say it with me. Thank you. And we thanking God. Say it again with me. Say thank you. And we say thank you because Lord you've been good to us. And we say thank you because Lord you've been good to us. And we say thank you because you've been good to us. And Lord we say thank you right now because you've been good to us. Is somebody out there this morning got a thank you praise? Is somebody out there today that can tell God thank you? Despite of what you're going through, despite of what you're feeling, despite you what it looks like somebody got to tell God today, thank you. Lord, I thank you for giving me food on my table. Lord, I thank you for giving me a roof over my head. Lord, I thank you even when I don't realize that you are working everything out for my good. I just say thank you. I just had to get that out today because I just feel like somebody, oh God, I thank you out there today. And if you're watching online, I want you to put that in the comment section right now and just say, Lord, thank you. Lord, you're thanking you. You're thank I'm thanking you, Lord, because you, you've been good to me. Lord, I'm thanking you because you allowed me to get up from here and, the, and you didn't allow me to go over there. I say thank you because you've given me the ability to stand and to give you praise. That's why I say thank you. It could have been me over there, but Lord, I say thank you. Lord, it could have been me six feet under, but Lord, I say thank you. And that's why. Why today I want somebody to tell the Lord thank you. Ha. Well, on today I just want to share something to you. And as you look over your life, if God was to say anything to you, and if God was to tell you to go, what would you tell him? The first thing that you would ask him is to say, okay, Lord, where do you want me to go? If God was saying go, would you sit there and give him a thousand reasons why you can't go? If God was saying go, would you tell him what's not right and what, what you got to wait to happen and, and what, 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 should it, what it should look like? But when God says go, when do you go? And I, rem and I, I recall this um, song my mother wrote years ago. And the song simply earnest says that, Lord, send me, I'll go. And this is one brother in the church, and he would sing this song uh, quite often. And he said, Lord, send me, I'll go. And the thing about it is, is that when God is trying to send you places, and when God is trying to give us instructions, then when he's saying go, then we want to give God all of the reasons why we can't go. I was having a conversation um, um, with a friend of mine, and I was telling them that when God speaks, sometimes it's not the way that we think it should speak. We're telling God, Lord, we want it this way. We're telling God how we want it to look, and we're telling God what, what day we want it to happen. We're telling God how we want the situation to play out. But when God says, when I give you instructions, I want you to go. Last week, I was preaching a, a message, and I was talking about acceleration. And I was talking about that when Moses, in the book of Exodus, the third chapter, you'll see that when now Moses now is, and he, he, was, he was tending to the sheep of his father-in-law. And then when he gets to this spot, at this place, he was at the foothills of the Mount um, uh, uh, Kadesh. And now when he is there in Harab, God now speaks to Moses and he tells Moses, he gives Moses instructions. And the instructions he's, he gives Moses, he tells Moses, he said, Moses, I want you to go back to Egypt. 
And I want you to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Today, I want to declare that everything that the enemy has hold of you, I'm speaking a word in somebody's life today that the enemy has to let you go. Moses now is at this place and he's telling God that, Lord, I got this wrong with me. And God, I, 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 I slew a man before I left Egypt and I, I, I don't talk right. I, 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 I stutter and people, people won't understand me. He said, God, well, how can I do this assignment that you're causing me to do? He said, Moses, if you go, I'm going to give you the tools that you need to go. He said, Moses, if you listen to me and stop trying to tell me what's not right and I, I, I can make all things right, he said, but all I want you to do is to go. When God says go, he's not asking for you, your, your, your excuses. He's not asking for you what's not right. But God is saying to each and every one of us that I want you to go into a place that I want to bless you. I want you to go into a place that you can make a difference. I want you to go into a place that I'm causing change. And I'm like, wow, that thing puzzled me. I was, I was riding in the car and me and my son, we were going and we were looking at a new car. And we was test driving this car, fool, and one of the things that my son told me, he said, um, Dad, I like this car. And he told me, he said, I want you to go fast. And I'm like, okay, you want me to go fast? He said, yeah, go fast. And when I did that, I immediately stepped on the gas, on the accelerator, and I went fast. And the moment that I did that, his face lit up, and he started laughing, and it threw him back to the seat, and I was like, okay, um, he told me, he said, Daddy, do it again. I said, you want me to do it again? He said, yeah, do it again. So I stepped on the accelerator. It threw him back to the seat, and he started laughing, and he said, Daddy, can you do it again? I said, we can't keep doing that because maybe the police will catch us, and, and, and they will give me a ticket. But he said, I like it when you did that because when you stepped on the accelerator, it caused me to get thrown back to the seat, and I liked the way that it felt. Well, today I want somebody to understand that God is about to, tell, to allow you to go faster than you've ever been before. When you have that adrenaline, when you get that feeling, that emotion of what God is doing and how he's causing things to happen, the Bible tells us, I want you to turn with me this morning, and I want you to go to 1 Peter, the third chapter, and the ninth verse. And, I mean, 2 Peter. So when you understand that God, what he wants to do, watch this. The Bible says in 2 Peter 3 and 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but in long suffering to us, we're not willing that any should perish, but that should come to repentance. What God's saying is that I've given you a promise. I've given you the instructions of how I want to bless you. And he said that if I did these things for you, I'm not going to be slack on what I said that I was going to do. If I said it before, I'm going to do it again. And that's why every time that my son made that statement, he said, Daddy, do it again. It just caused me to want to show him that how we can accelerate. And when I stepped on the gas, it caused him to get this drilling and rush that he wanted me to do it again. How many of you out there today want God to do it again? When you came into salvation, there was something about it that when God saved you, when he changed your life, the Bible says it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. You, the way you felt, the way that you responded, the way that you acted, the way that you wanted to do everything in your life at the moment you received salvation, it was something that you could not explain. It was something that you just said, I feel good. It was something that you said, I don't feel dirty no more. I don't feel uh, like a castaway. I I feel like I belong to somebody or something. God's saying today that I want to speed up everything that's holding you back so you can do it all over again. And then I'm sitting there and I'm saying, when I look at the word speed, the Bible says, and, and this is the King James Version of the word, the interpretation of speed, it says to make haste. Meaning that we got to get in a hurry for what God is about to do. Everything in life that when God is about to do something, he's preparing us for what is about to be done. God wants to prepare you for the blessing that he's about to take you. But if you're not ready, then you're not going to be able to receive what God is going to put in store for you. The next meaning of, it, uh, of speed, it says to, to, to prosper. God wants to prosper us. The Bible tells us in 3 John 2, it says that I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. 
God wants to prosper you. He wants to bless you. Somebody wrote me online and said, where in the Bible that says that God wants us to be blessed and he wants us to prosper? I said, well, you're not reading your scriptures because the Bible says that I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health. But even as your soul prosper, I don't want to prosper and I'd still lose my soul and die and go to hell. But if I walk up right, if I'm doing what God told me to do, and if I'm following and being obedient, then God, I want you to bless me. I want you to bless me indeed. I want you to increase my territory. I want you to enlarge me, God. And that's the blessing that I want for you. I don't want to just get my blessings in heaven, but I want my blessings on earth too. Can, am I talking to somebody out there today? God is trying to bless you, but then he says that in the meaning of blessing you, he said that you have to move at a rapid pace. And then when I did that and I was test driving this car, you just can't test drive a car and just and just be easy with it. Sometimes you got to be a little rough with it. You got to turn the wheel real hard and you got to go over some bumps and, 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 and to go down some valleys and some hills just to see how this car is going to respond to certain movements of that car. And God is taking you through areas and issues in your life because he wants to see how you're going to respond. Can you deal with the things that you have to deal with? Can you deal with depression? Can you deal with the struggles of not having enough? Can you deal with people turning their back on you and running you down? God say, are you able to deal with what I'm about to do? Because if you're able to endure... I'm about to allow you to go faster in your life than you ever been. You've got to the place that where you're saying that, Lord, I've been forgotten about. Lord, I've been cast aside and set apart. But God said that if you're able to endure, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to bless you in ways that you've never imagined that you can be blessed. I want you to go faster. Can somebody understand that when you understand that God wants to bless you, he said that I'm not going to bless you a long time from now. Watch this. The Bible tells us in St. John, the ninth chapter, in the fourth verse, turn to St. John 9 and 4. The writer tells us, it says, I must work the work of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Well, when you understand that God is trying to get us into a place that I want you to do this now. I don't want you to wait till later. I don't want you to wait till next year. I want what I, what I have in store for you to do. I want you to do it now. And when he understands this, give me, give me Jeremiah 12 and 5. And now this is what happened to the majority of the church world. The majority of the church world, Harry, they get into a place where they start forgetting about what God has done for them. If God did it before, Ernest, he's going to do it again. If God delivered you out of that, he's going to bring you into this. If God said that I'm going to bless you, he said I'm going to bless you indeed. But in the book of Jeremiah, the 12th chapter, watch this. He says, if thou hast run with the footmen and they have wearied thee, that means you have started on this journey. You've started on this course. But but somewhere along the line, you got tired. You got to a place where you said that I can't do this anymore. You got to the place where you said this is too hard. I don't understand. Lord, why this ain't working out right? Lord, you promised me that I was going to be blessed. Lord, you told me I was going to be the head and no longer the tail. But somewhere along the line, you gave up. And he's telling us, he said that how can you run this race and get tired? Watch this. And he says that then how can thou contend with horses? How are you going to be able to fight this fight if you can't run this race? And he said, and if in the land of peace wherein thou trusted, they weary thee, that means they got tired. He said, then how will thou do in the swelling of Jordan? When things really get rough, when things get, when things get hard, when you get to a place, and I remember, foo, I was, I had just got in this house, and this was my dream house, and I I love this house. I, I prayed and I asked God to give me this house, but something happened along the way. My money got funny and my change was strange. And I got to the point where I couldn't afford to, to, to pay my mortgage. And I would be hiding in my house when the rent man would come knock on the door and say, hey, you're late. And I'm saying that, God, you gave me this promise, but I didn't know it was going to come with problems. And in the midst of all of that, God was teaching me how to trust in him. Sometimes we can ask God for things, but then when we God give us those things, he didn't tell us that what was going to happen along the journey of those things. And I would get into this house and I would feel like, did I miss God? Did, 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 I, did I make the wrong decision? But God was trying to get me to the place where if I send you, if I send you to this place, you got to trust and obey that where I sent you, I'm going to be able to sustain you. Y'all hear me out there today. Wherever God sends you, 
in this place that this is where you're going to have to trust and obey that where God sends you, that's where he's going to be able to sustain you. And now I get to this place, watch this. In the book of Isaiah, the sixth chapter, you'll see that now when, when you read in the first verse that you'll see that now King Uzziah has died. He has, he has left the scene. And now you see that Isaiah now is now being emerged on the scene. And God now is telling Isaiah, he said, Isaiah, I'm going to make you a prophet to the nations. And I want you to go tell the people all the things that I'm going to instruct you to tell them. But here's the first thing that what happens that when God tells Isaiah what he wants him to do. Now, Isaiah starts giving God all of his problems. He starts telling God, Lord, I'm not right. God, I'm doing this wrong and I'm doing that wrong. He said that I'm not ready to be on this, this journey, what you're calling me. That's when, when, when God calls you, don't, uh, don't try to tell God how to fix your problems. God said that if I send you, I'm going to make provisions of where I'm going to send you. Now you hear what? But Moses did the same thing. God tell Moses, he said, Moses, I want you to go in and I want you to tell Pharaoh this and I want you to get my people out of Egypt. I want you to get them out of sin. Now Moses started giving God all of the things that is not right. Now here we fast forward. Isaiah does the exact same thing. He starts telling God, he said, Lord, I've committed sin. He said, Lord, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not able to do this. Because my heart is not right. But the first thing that he did, he recognized what was wrong with him. He recognized that he was in a place that he was telling God, Lord, I know that this is not right. I know that I'm not right. But whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do it. Wherever you tell me to go, I'm going to go. He did not qualify you just because you was perfect, but he qualified you because there was something in you he knew that you were going to do what's right. He knew that there was something in you that was going to cause you to change because he put something before you that was going to cause you to fight. He put something before you that's going to cause you to say that I want to change and I want to do better. But the moment that we start looking at it, well, I'm not going to come to church right now because I know I'm not right. And I don't want people talking about me. Oh, I'm not going to come out of this because I love this person and, and I know that they go change one day. But God said that if you just come. I'm going to cause things to start working out for your good. Watch this. In the book of Isaiah, the sixth chapter, and the eight, um, start at the second verse. And he said this. He says, above is stood the seraphims. Each one has six wings. The twain, and he covered his face. And the twain, he covered his feet. And the twain, he did fly. Because why? What's happening in the third verse? He says, and one cried unto another and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. See, God is the one that's holy. He's the one that's going to make you holy. He ain't worrying about your past life. He ain't worrying about the things that you did last year. I know you made mistakes because I've made mistakes. I know you've fallen short because I've fallen short. But God said, I got a calling on your life and I'm trying to prepare you for where I'm trying to prepare you to go. But then stop telling me what's not right. Stop telling me what's not going to work right. Stop telling me what's wrong. But God said that if you go, I'm going to bless you. The fifth verse, watch this. And he said unto him, he said, then said, woe is me. Now he started looking at it and said, wait a minute, I got a problem. For I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips. I said some things that I shouldn't have said. I talked about some people that I shouldn't have talked about. He said, but, and I dwell in the midst of people of the unclean. He said, I hang around people that I know I shouldn't hang around. I go places where I know I shouldn't go. But then watch this, the sixth verse, here's what he tells him. He says, now what, how, what, here's what I'm going to do for you, Isaiah. He said, then flew, he laid it upon his mouth, the seventh verse. He said, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, he grabbed some tongues of a hot coal. And then he said, I laid it upon your mouth and I touched your lips and thine iniquity is taken away and thy sin is purged. When you recognize what God is trying to do, God is trying to deliver you. God is trying to take away the old and he's trying to replace it with the new. Stop trying to tell God what's not right. Stop trying to tell God what you could do better. But God's saying that um, uh, if you're ready to, 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 to go forth, if you're ready to do what I call you to do, I'm going to cleanse you and I'm going to purge you. I think somebody else said the same thing. Give me Job 42 and 6. Job said the same thing. Job told God, he said this, watch this. He says, where I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. In the course of one day, Job lost everything. He lost his family. He lost his, worth, his, his earthly possessions. But then he said, God, if I had done anything wrong, I repent. 
Today, I'm calling for somebody to denounce everything that you've done wrong. And I want you to come before the Lord. Watch this. Go give me Luke, the fifth chapter. And I want to start at the eighth verse. You'll see that now where Luke is faced with the same issue. you see that Job had his issues. And you see that now Isaiah had his issues. Now we're coming to Luke, and Luke is at the same place. God started at the fifth verse. Go back to the third verse. Watch this. And now what, what you see what's going to take place. Jesus now, he entered into the ships which one was Simon's, and he prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land, and he sat down and he taught the people on the ship. This is Jesus. Watch this. And now he tell him, he said that now when he had left speaking, after Jesus had spoken the word, he says that he, he said, launch out into the deep and let down your nets. Not because Peter was right. Not because that it was anything that he had done right, but he wanted to show him that I'm going to be with you no matter where you're at. And this is what now he cast his net out. And he said, and Simon answering him said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night. He's telling him, Lord, we done did all of this, but God said that you didn't do it the way I'm telling you to do it. If you listen to me, if you listen to where I'm trying to instruct you, he said, I'm going to bless you like never before. I'm going to speed up. Somebody tell God, said, Lord, go fast. And now he's telling him, he said, this time, Peter, I want you to throw your net out, but this time I want you to do it on the other side. And he says, then he said, and he said, we did this all night. And we didn't catch nothing. He said, this time, Peter, throw your net, the sixth verse. And he tells him, he says, and when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes in their nets break. God is about to increase you like never before. He gave him more than he could ever expect. He gave him more than he was able to handle because God wants you to understand that I'm about to take you into places. I'm about to do things in your life that's going to cause your life. To, I'm going to blow your mind. And watch this. And he said that when that took place, the seventh verse, and now he goes in and he tells him, he said, and they beckon unto their partners. They call their friends. And he said, I want to show you how God has blessed me. I got too much and I need to share this because because God has blessed me. And they filled up both of the ships until they started to sink. The eighth verse, now watch this. When all of that happened, here's what Peter did. He said, when Peter saw it, he fell down. And he said, Jesus, I want to worship you. He tells him, he says that I want to denounce everything that I didn't do right. He starts telling him, he said that, Lord, I'm a sinner. This is the things that I've done wrong. It's now time to come back to the altar. It's time to come back to the place where God wants you to be. And now he tells him, he says that all of these things that I have done, he tell him, he said that now because you did something that I know that couldn't be done. I tried it in my own might and it didn't work. But when I listened to you, things started to change. And now watch this. You read a little further down. And he says, Peter, two other brothers was there. They called the son of Zebedee's. When they saw all of this, they said, I'm putting this aside. And Jesus tells them, he says, now I want to make you a fisher of men. You've been working your own way. You've been trying to do it on your own. He said, but now I want to make you a fisher of men. And I go back to my son. He was telling me, he said, Daddy, go fast. And each time he would tell me that he was reminded of what happened when I stepped on the accelerator. And he said, do it again. And I'm telling you today that when you tell God, say, Lord, I repent of everything that I have done wrong. Lord, I'm sorry for the mistakes that I've made. Lord, I'm sorry for causing people to stumble at your word. But Lord, I know that you did it before. I know that you delivered me where I didn't have to do wrong. And I'm asking you right now, Lord, will you do it again? And I'm telling you, today somebody's life is going to change. And you're going to tell God, Lord, I don't want to wait till next week. I don't want to wait till next month, but I want to go fast. And I want to go fast because I don't got time because tomorrow is not promised to me. But I'm telling you right now, Lord, go fast. Because I need that feeling back. 
I need my joy back. Lord, go fast. Lord, concerning the promises that you said to me, I told you in 2 Peter 3 and 9, God is not slack concerning his promises to men. Lord, go fast. Lord, do it again. And when he do it again, I'm going to start laughing. When he do it again, I'm going to start pointing my fingers for everybody that cast me out and that say, you ain't going to make it. You know good, but I'm telling you, God, do it again. And watch this, and I'm closing. And you read down after Jesus did this miracle. Now Peter, the sons of Zebedee, they start following Christ. And he gets to a city. And there was a leper. Watch this, Harry. And this leper came to Jesus. He said, Jesus, have mercy on me. I'm telling you today that God will have mercy on you. And he tells Jesus, he said, will you heal me of my disease? Will you heal me of my infirmities? Will you restore me back to the place that I was? And just what Jesus did, he's going to do for you. He reached out his hand. The Bible says he touched him. Can you reach out your hand right now? He's ready and he's willing to touch you. And the writer tells us, he said, immediately. <laughs> he said, immediately his leprosy was gone. And I want you to know right now that God is going to do it again. He's going to restore you back to the place where you was. And I stand here today not because I'm perfect, not because I got it all together, but I stand here because I made some mistakes. And just when my son told me, he said, Daddy, go fast. And when he told me that, the feeling that he got when I stepped on the accelerator caused him to feel a certain way, and he told me to do it again. And I told God, I said, Lord, I made some mistakes, and I've fallen short, but I need you to pick me back up. The Bible says the righteous falls seven times, but then he gets back up again. Don't stay in that place where you are mourning about where you made a mistake. Don't stay in that place where you're feeling that people are going to talk about you and run you down, but pick yourself back up and tell God, say, Lord, do it again. And when you do this, I leave you with these words. Tell him today, Say, go fast. Restore me back. Go fast. I want to make up for the time that I lost. Go fast. Because, Lord, you're working some things out for my good. Go fast. Because there are some people that need to hear my testimony. Go fast. Because, Lord, I need to get and tear the devil's kingdom down. Go fast because there are some places that I need to go. Go fast because somebody needs to get delivered from where they're at. Go fast because, Lord, somebody is dying and they need to hear my testimony. Go fast because somebody needs to be healed and they need to come up out of that hospital. Go fast because somebody needs to be delivered out of those prison bars. Go fast, somebody said with me today. Go fast. And when he go fast, He's going to make up for the time that was lost.